Hello everybody, welcome back to Plum Figgy. This is Tammy. Okay, so guess what I wanted to make this weekend? <laughs> um, I've been wanting to make an ephemera book for quite some time, um, but I just never quite found the time to do it. I don't know. It's my own fault, I guess. I always have all these projects I want to do and <laughs> I just don't always make the time for them. So I decided, well, this weekend is the weekend I'm gonna do it, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work out, oh well. So as you can see, um, for the base of my book, I'm gonna use this old beat up philosophy, I think it looks like a textbook, um, and then this paper here is some art drawing craft paper that I picked up at an estate sale, um, oh, what, a month and a half ago-ish, um, for a dollar. It was a whole dollar, <laughs> and, um, I knew it was going to be kind of a pain to work with because there you can see, um, it just wanted to fold up all the time because it's probably been in a roll for the last 25 years. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I knew it was probably gonna be a project for myself that I would use it for, because I don't know how well it would work to write on. I don't know, maybe I could try it. But um, there you saw, um, I just took my little uh, spray bottle of water, there's nothing in there but water, um, and just sprayed both sides and kind of let that water sink into the paper a, a little bit and that kind of stopped the wrinkle factor or the, not the wrinkle the curl factor um, so then just um, ripping it in half and then needed to figure out how to fold it so that it would fit the best way in the book but that I also wouldn't be wasting a bunch of paper in the end. So um, decided it was best to fold it that way. Um, and then I'm going to grab the book again. Yep, so just measuring to see uh, it's going to be the right height. And then I'm going to rip that in half now. And then those pieces I will fold in half, um, I guess, horizontally, uh, so that they will create the signatures. So, yeah, no, no rocket science here, um, but I knew I wanted to use the same paper. I didn't want a bunch of different colors going on in the background, um, or patterns uh, because I wanted my ephemera to shine um, and not the paper that I used to construct the book. So um, using this craft paper was actually a perfect solution because A, it was super cheap. B, it was the perfect weight. I mean, it was a little bit heavier. Uh, it's not like you're packing craft paper that's thinner. Those are great for using as pages in a journal um, because they're awesome for writing on and doing mixed media on. But this was perfect for this particular use. So um, here I'm just uh, folding my quarter of the paper in half. And then here you see I'm just seeing how much I'll have extra to um, cut off at the end. Um, and I think now, yes, so now we're going to take the um, block of paper out of the book. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but it's not too difficult. And honestly, if you have an older book like this, it's a little bit beat up. It's a lot easier to do uh, because uh, if it's a newer book, you, you're not going to get your finger into the spine like that usually. So all you need to do is take a an X-Acto knife and very carefully follow the edge of the book cover um, and you can see that gap there where I'm cutting and the biggest thing that you're gonna think about is not getting your um, cut sorry my mom just texted me uh, not getting your cut 
in the spine of the book so that you don't, uh, you're cut, so that you don't get your exacto knife through the spine of the book. And that's our, that's the biggest thing um, to be careful of. So uh, as you can see, after I did that, this book needed a little bit of help to stay together. So I'm just going to my um, fabric stash of bits and pieces to see what kind of fabric I might have handy that would be a good size. And I remembered I had this piece, which is kind of a beige with an, a white, um, I don't know if you want to say doily pattern. It's a really pretty little fabric. Um, there, so you can see it. And then I'm going to just grab my water again and try and get some of those wrinkles out. Just a little bit of water. Don't need to worry about an iron. Um, yeah, there's still a little bit of a wrinkle in the end, but by the time I glue this into the spine of the book, you're, well, first of all, you're never going to see the fabric anyway. Um, but second of all, the wrinkles just going to disappear. So this is a great little trick. I always have a little spray bottle of water next to me at my craft desk because yeah, it comes in super handy all the time. <clears throat> so, all right, just gonna, and honestly, I didn't spray enough to make it like super wet or anything. So it's really not, it's pretty much dry al already. Um, so Sometimes if they're not, though, you can just set it aside for a minute or two and let it dry and then do something else for a minute and come back to it and it's ready to go. So another little trick that I have is if you have, well, I used to have a desk light that um, was kind of like a bar shape um, light and I used to, <laughs> I used to drape the fabric over the top of that just for a minute. <laughs> It was not unsafe, don't worry, the light was new, it wasn't hot enough to make a fire or anything, but it was warm enough to um, to not wrinkle it some more and then also dry it, so yeah, it was a fun little, I don't have that, I don't use that light anymore, but um, I kind of miss it for that reason though, <laughs> so just basically measured that so that um, a little bit extra would fall over the sides. Um, I knew I wanted to maintain the existing um, front and back covers. I didn't want to cover up that book plate. Uh, so um, just wanted to have enough fabric to reinforce the spine and um, make the book last longer. So just going to glue that down, um, starting with the top half, and then I'll glue the bottom half, and that little part will be done. And of course, I always, uh, when I'm gluing with Fabri-Tac, uh, spread it out with my finger before putting the fabric down, because Fabri-Tac will show through fabric, um, even upholstery fabric. <laughs> if it's not super thick. Uh, so yeah, I just do that out of caution. And again, like I said, nobody's ever going to see that fabric anyway, but I don't know. I just still do it that way. So, all right. So back to the innards of the book and here, I think I'm going to make my signatures. Uh, I decided to do four pages for each signature. Yeah, so that was maybe the last one. And I ended up with four signatures in the end. <clears throat> so now I just need to, and I sped this up because it gets a little boring, but now I need to measure the book block so I know how big my signatures need to be. And uh, just this stuff takes the longest time, I swear. <laughs> um, but... Once you're past this, well, I shouldn't say that. Once you're past this and then sewing in the pockets, the rest of this is fun. <laughs> not to say that this wasn't fun, but this is, you know, this is not the most fun part of making a journal <laughs> for a lot of people. So anyway, um, I like to use the ruler and, and rip method and tear method. 
um, rather than using my trimmer like I'm using here. But either way would work great. Or if you wanted to use your ruler with an X-Acto knife, that would have worked really well too. Uh, I just like the jagged edge look, the grungier look of it. So, um, yeah, so here I'm just taking my uh, sleeve protectors and... I don't know how easy it is to see these, but I did them one at a time because they are a little bit fiddly once you kind of get rid of all the edges. But um, all I'm doing here was I measured the width of the page, which the full width of the page is five and a half inches. Um, and so then I measured these to five and a quarter. So that had just a little bit of um, free space on either side. And then I'm making the pockets just different sizes. Um, I ended up doing, I think, two inch high, two and a quarter, and two and a half inch high. And then um, whatever was left on them. So probably some of them were four inches high. Uh, so I had a mixture of basically small pockets and larger pockets. So now I'm uh, preparing the pockets, uh, and again, I'm sorry, it's pretty hard to see the actual clear <laughs> pockets, but um, before I glued any of them down on each paper or each page, I wanted to see how they would fit, and then I'm just taking a little bit of glue stick on each side just to tack them down. Uh, before I take these to the sewing machine. So um, obviously I didn't film every page, but this is the general way I did them all. Um, and so how I did it was I had four, four pieces of paper for each signature, and then I'm putting pockets on uh, the outside of the first page and the inside of the second page, and then gluing those two pages together. So really, each signature only has, I guess, technically two pages, uh, but they're thicker. Plus, once you add, so here, so that was the outside, and now I'm gonna add pockets to the inside. And there you can see is one of the taller pockets. So I was able to fit two tall pockets on a um, page. And on this one, I decided to do <clears throat> both sides um, of the two taller pockets. So, and I'll show you all of this. Um, I was just getting ahead of myself, I guess, in explaining it. But again, um, just tacking those down with some glue. And yes, you do see the glue right now um, because it is still a little bit wet on that that paper, um, it just, I found that it just takes a long time for that to dry out and eventually disappear. So, um, the next day you couldn't see any of the glue, uh, markings that were on there, uh, except for one. I, I used Fabri-Tac on one pocket or maybe one page of pockets. I don't remember exactly, but, um, yeah, you still could see some of the glue on that one, but honestly, it doesn't really bother me at all. It's more, I'm using this, this is a utilitarian product for me. It's, it's going to house my ephemera. So, uh, it's just for me. Uh, and then I just put that other piece of plastic underneath to keep from getting glue on my uh, work mat there. So, all right. So yeah, just tacking those down and then I'm going to take those to my sewing machine and sew them all on. And I'll tell you what, this took a long time, <laughs> a really long time. <laughs> uh, if you're thinking about doing a project like this, just know that this is tedious. It's, I didn't think it was super fun. I mean, it was okay at first, but then after a while, I was like, am I almost done with this? <laughs> so, yeah just be prepared for, for a project or break it up into multiple times to work on. And that might be easier for you. So, 
Okay, so got those sewed on. Um, nothing fancy, just did a straight stitch on three sides and obviously left the tops open so that I could fill them up. And just cutting off the threads there. And here you can see how I'm constructing my signatures. So there's my two pages. And then I'm going to glue the front to this, the first page to the second page. And I did this um, in halves. I didn't do both sides at the same time, just so I could move things around a little bit if I needed to. Um, and yeah, this was paper was uh, still wavy enough that I knew it wasn't going to be a completely perfect join and that's okay with me again like I again as long as it works and holds together and does what I need it to do that's great and to be honest I kind of like it looking a little bit uh raggedy <laughs> uh, because I just think it looks more interesting that way so <laughs> all right so here you can see I've got my two well, the four pages now glue, glued together, two at a time, and then each of those makes a signature, and then I'm putting four signatures in here. So I think this spine of this book was two and a quarter or two and a half inches. No, it was two inches. So uh, here I'm measuring for, <clears throat> I wanted to do a... Uh, I didn't want to sew the signatures directly into the spine, so um, I did a hidden um, stitch. And to do that, you want to uh, create the block of spine paper just a little bit smaller than the width of your book spine so that the uh, covers can close easily. So that's what I did there. All that is is some scrap uh, file folder and it's just three pieces of file folder glued together and um, cut out. And so now here I'm just making my template for my spine. And the way I like to do that is take my Tim Holtz ruler, which I need to replace. I don't know if you can see the little notch there um, at the eight inch mark, but on the other side, there's a notch and I can't really use it to rip paper anymore and I love using this ruler for ripping paper so I'm sad about it but yeah so um here I'm just trying to work out evenly spaced four tick marks uh, on this spine and I decided it would be best to to use the dashed lines in between the solid lines um so Every half inch, I think, is what I ended up doing. And then, obviously, you do that on the other end. And then use your ruler to join your lines, top to bottom. And I just sped this up because it's pretty boring stuff. I just grabbed a black pen because it's easier to see for me and you. My shirt says rosy skies ahead, if you're wondering. <laughs> and I got it at Old Navy last year. I don't know if they even have them anymore, but it's a fun, it's cute. <laughs> All right, so now I'm making my tick marks for the um, actual holes that I'm going to uh, sew into. And because it's a hidden stitch, um, I use an even number of holes. If you're doing a pamphlet stitch, you'll probably want an odd number of holes. Not probably. You will want an odd number of holes. But because this isn't, I'm not tying each um, signature off, um, I didn't need to have an odd number. So, And here I'm just making my um, little template for uh, making the holes in each signature and so you obviously want to make sure that your holes match and line up with 
your template and I always mark out which side is the top and the top should be the same on both of your templates because <laughs> I've seen where well I know I've done this where it doesn't match up exactly <laughs> all the time so yeah all right, so now I'm just taking another little piece of fabric, and this is what you're going to be able to see on the spine in the book. So um, I want to cover up the uh, spine block that I've been creating my template on the back side of, and um, cover that with some nice pretty fabric. And then that's also going to help uh, it to... Um, you're going to use, you're going to need a little bit of extra on each side again to glue down to the front and back covers. So that's what's going to keep your signatures and everything all in place. So again, um, just kind of uh, taking my finger and I don't know why I'm being so picky about this. I think I was just nervous about getting it all lined up square, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I took a long time to do that, but yeah, um, just getting the glue all spread out so that it won't show through to the front of the fabric there and very carefully getting that glued down. And there you see, I have my template still, so it's easy to know where my holes will be. And then now I'm going to poke my holes through so I don't have to do it twice after I um, poke, I've done this too, poke the holes and then forgot, oh yeah, I got to get my fabric on the other side. And then I had to poke them all again. So put your fabric on first and then you won't have to do it twice. <laughs> okay. Using my little other template to poke the holes in the signatures here, be very careful about where your fingers are. <laughs> um, it hurts when you don't, <laughs> but this is an abbreviated uh, version of my sewing and signatures video. Um, I can link that in the box uh, in the description box below if you'd like to watch that. Uh, it's part of one of my playlists for I think it's my DIY or tutorial playlist. But here you can see how I'm sewing them in. I'm not making a knot on every signature, uh, and that's why I only needed four holes. So I can't show you the whole thing because you need to go to Nick the Booksmith's um, tutorials and buy her tutorial on how to do that to get all the f details. Um, but what I've shown you is nothing that you can't find on a lot of other people's videos on YouTube. So, all right. So we have a finished book. Now is the fun part where uh, I get to fill it up. But as you can see, each page is slightly different. I wasn't too worried about matching up each um, page to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because, you know, your ephemera is going to be all different sizes and shapes and everything anyway. So, yeah. So, uh, here are some sticker... Uh, tickets that I ha actually all the ephemera I'm putting in here for right now is odds and ends that I've bought from AliExpress over the last year or two and um, I wanted those in here because they've been in like these little boxes that are really cute but they always kind of get put away and I forget about them so I, I wanted mostly this book for that kind of stuff and um, if I do any fussy cutting of, so like I just recently got a birds and wildlife nature book from an estate sale and I pretty much want to fussy cut all of that stuff out of there. And um, I wanted a place to put, oh, look at the kitty, so cute. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a place to put that where I knew I would reach for it a lot and they wouldn't get forgotten about, you know? So, so yeah. So, um, just filling this up uh, with all my little goodies. And I did learn something here. 
which was, I filled it, I packed it a little bit too full. Um, and you'll see the, you'll see that in a minute when I try to shut the book. Um, but yeah, so I love these stickers and I hardly, like I said, I hardly ever use them because I always forget I even have them because they're kind of tucked away and hidden in these not as easy accessible little boxes. So I got to use those boxes for something else. But I wasn't trying to get too hung up on um, separating them terribly carefully. I was more worried about the different shapes and sizes and fitting them into pockets that were near to each other, but um, also m worked with the size and shape that the stickers were. Um, I fully plan for this book to be constantly changing because obviously I want to use these stickers and the ephemera that I'm putting in here. So um, naturally I would be replacing that with new things or other um, things that I've fu uh, fussy cut out of books or, you know, um, I tend to like to write, uh, write, type out phrases with my vintage typewriter and I really haven't had a good place to store that kind of stuff and what usually happens was it is, is it gets put into some little storage box somewhere and again like I just kind of forget about it and so I kind of want to have this book you know sitting on my um, desk or near close enough to my desk that I can easily reach for it when I'm ready um, to find something new so this is fun though I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy doing this kind of stuff but obviously here you can see too the ones on the bottom they're just a little bit tall and are covering up the bottom of the row above them. But again, that doesn't bother me. Um, I can see enough of it that I know what um, they are and I can easily reach for uh, what, I'm, what I might be looking for. So those two little boxes, the, the stickers were close enough alike that I decided to go ahead and combine them onto the same page. Pages. Um, and doing this made me excited because I was like, ooh, I could use this for that and this one for that. <laughs> you know, um, doing think projects like this is, is really fun um, for a couple of reasons, right? Because you're uh, reacquainting yourself with your stash. And I don't know about you guys, but boy, do I have a stash. <laughs> uh, I got stuff. I don't think I need to shop except like, okay. So this quarantine thing that we're, oh, I shouldn't have said that word. This, um, stay at home thing that we're all dealing with right now. I'm fine. Totally fine with, uh, products and things to use except for Fabri-Tac. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, do I go to the store or order? Okay, so Michaels is doing um, a new cool thing, if you don't know about this. Sorry, uh, enabling here, but um, they're doing, they'll take your order. If you ship uh, and order curbside delivery, they're, they're bringing your order out to you now. So you don't even have to go into the store if you don't want to. It's awesome. I've used it already. I needed some fabric tag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, if you, if you have a Michaels near, nearby you and you're kind of jonesing for some craft, um, shopping, there you go. There's a little tip for you. <laughs> so far I've been really good. I haven't bought anything I didn't need. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of stuff, you guys. Um, I probably should do some D stash videos or put them up on um, Instagram or something. I don't know. We'll see. The biggest thing that my, my biggest, I don't know if I want to say regret, but because it's not a regret, because I love them all, but 
how many happy planners I have is ridiculous. I think I have um, five happy planners for each year of the last three years. And I use one. <laughs> mm. It's it's so stupid. Like, why do I have all this stuff? I don't need it. But the good thing is, because, you know, we're junk journalers, I can use that paper. <laughs> so it's not like it's going to waste, but still, it's unnecessary. <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> At least I know I'm not alone. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think this is about it for my um, ephemera. These are some fun vintage labels, also from AliExpress, um, that, again, I would use a lot more of them um, if I just remembered I'd had them, um, but now I will obviously be using them. So I'm wondering if I should make another one of these for all my other ephemera or keep what my current system is for those. I don't know. I think I'll have to see. I'll wait and see. But all right. So here you saw how thick that was when I shut it the first time. So I went back and kind of rearranged things. There you see I took um, that was on one page and put them onto two pages. Same with those. And that kind of stayed the same. Um, but then these, these are thicker cards, so I spread those out into one spread, and um, yeah, so I have a lot of pages left over. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it, hope you're dealing, and I will see you all again really soon. Bye!